Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. I have my handy helper here. He is taking some of the pressure off creating, and we are going to share with you his Easy Apple Pie Moonshine Recipe. This is a great gift. This is a great party favor. This is this is really good, and it's not like the other Apple Pie Moonshine videos you might see, right? Exactly. Okay, so first, Phil, will you let us know what the ingredients are? Ingredients are... Cinnamon sticks. Okay. Apple juice, one gallon. Apple cider, one gallon. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. Usually three quarters of a cup, but I like dumping the whole bag in. What? Light brown sugar. Really? Really. A lot of people use Everclear, but Everclear is a little harsh. And I found this, and it's made from potatoes, and it's from Poland. Here, show it to the camera so that it sees it. Okay. Spirin, if you can pronounce it, you're great. <laughs> okay. But it does a wonderful job. I put two of these in, and it took me a while to figure out that how many jars do I need? Well, you've got one gallon, one gallon, there's four quarts in the gallon, that's eight, two fifths, we're going to be right about 12, oh, we're right about 10, I don't know why I got 12, just in case, but 10 quarts it should be. Okay, so what do we have to do? Because I know that with... Normal moonshine recipes that people do, they have you heat everything up and, you know, do all that. They fun have stuff. you heat everything up, <clears throat> which really does not do anything at all. And a lot of them make the mistake of heating it up with the alcohol in it, which the heat burns off the alcohol. Okay. And you'll definitely not get the kick that you're going to get from this. Okay. So you put one cinnamon stick in each jar. And it's better to make them fatties so that people don't swallow them. <laughs> okay. You know, it is a dumb world right now. Oh, yes. If you're having a hard time finding tanning jars, save your mayo jars. This is the perfect thing to use those non-canning jars, like the Classico spaghetti sauce or mayo jars, glass ones, um, any of those glass jars that you're not supposed to can in. Okay, so what are you doing now? Right now I'm pouring in the apple juice because it's thinner than the apple cider. We're using a 20-quart stock pot to create this. Smells wonderful. And then we're going to put the booze in. It smells more than wonderful. This is not the breakfast of champions, my friends. Now we do have a previous, or rather old, uh, apple cider uh, moon or an apple moonshine video. Um, I will link that down below and in the i cards so that you can see uh, the original recipe and then how it has since been modified by Phil. Saved a lot of time, and now we're getting a better product. And before I put the cider in. I'm going to put the sugar in and stir it up because with the apple juice and the booze, it breaks down easier. Quicker. You don't have to use this much sugar though? No. You definitely want to let diabetics know that it's not sugar friendly. This is not diabetic friendly at all. <clears throat> but you can use one, two, three cups of sugar. You know, you don't have to use the whole bag. 
You know what? I'm only going to use a half a bag. Okay, made him feel guilty about it. Okay, here we go. Score one for the win. So that's about three cups of sugar right there. Yeah. Oh, forgot Wooden to get spoon. a spoon. Okay, and I'm going to move you closer so you can see. Okay, he's got it all in there. You can see it breaking down. So the purpose is to dissolve all of the sugar. Exactly. So when you no longer feel the grainy aspect of the sugar, then you've done your job. If it looks like I'm having a little trouble here, I am because... He thinks he can't stir with his left hand. I've got my thumb in the way. As I'm used to using my right hand with no thumb, <laughs> my thumb is in my way here. I don't know why or what, but... Okay. That should do it. Now the apple cider. You can see it swirling right in there. The booze makes the, the apple juice slick on top. So it's just like a little tornado. <laughs> and it's apple cider, so you got in the bottom. A little bit of sediment. Yes. And you want to keep all that stuff in there with it because that's what makes it super, super good. Okay, that, that. See, now they're just seeing your arm. I know, but they can see how much easier it is for me to <laughs> stir with no thumb. Okay, this is not this is not uh, an advocate for removing thumbs. It does not make stirring easier. It's just what he's used. See, to. now you know the booze is at the top because you got the bubbles. Okay, so he's just got a two cup measuring cup, and that's what he's using to fill the jars. And we'll see how much he actually gets. I'm saying right about 10 quarts. Oh, you're spilling a lot. And that's with your right hand. <laughs> when I'm done, I will lick your sink. Okay. <laughs> So this has a little more punch to it than um, the previous apple cider or, or apple pie, thank you, apple pie moonshine video, um, because it does have more booze in it. Um, I don't know how difficult it is to find this particular kind of alcohol, uh, but it is 151 proof. So it is a grain, it is a grain neutral spirit, 151 proof. It is a little smoother than Everclear, but you can absolutely use Everclear. Or if you prefer, you can use vodka, you know. Um, some people use uh, like a spiced rum, like Captain Morgan spiced rum. And that gives you a really neat flavor with the spices added in for the apple pie. It's a spiced apple pie. Yeah. It's good stuff. But your family and friends will love you for some apple pie moonshine. And if you want, you can put it, you can absolutely put it in pints. Now, the fun stuff about apple pie moonshine is that um, it's not something that is preservable, okay? You can make it up, you can put it in your refrigerator, you know, if you have an extra fridge. Um, you can put it in a basement if it's a cooler basement. You don't want it to freeze, definitely, but it does need to be cool because there is no preservation in this. The alcohol will not keep it from going bad. 
The longer it sits in your fridge, though, um, I do believe it becomes a little more potent as a result. It does. Yeah. I've had it a year after. and But it stays refrigerated. Exactly. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily put it on the shelf, you know what I mean? Um, but if you have a way to refrigerate it, it's good for a good long time. And with winter coming for us northern states, hey, a lot of us have, you know, breezeways or mud rooms or something that are a little bit cooler. And so that makes it a little easier than taking up space in your house fridge. But if you're looking at short term, definitely. You can do quarts, you can do pints, you can do whatever size bottle or jar that you have where you can put an airtight lid on it. And that's just so it doesn't leak, you know. So I'm seeing a little bit of brown clumps. Is that just the brown sugar? That uh, didn't the get cider. That's the cider? <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see, but the cinnamon sticks start to float. But they soak up all of that too. People really like having the cinnamon sticks in there. And the longer that it sits with the cinnamon stick in there, the more infused that it becomes also. Sometimes it's just easier to upend the pot. There we go. Okay, it's going to be a little more intense. Ten and a pint. There you go. Just a little extra for the maker. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, then you just put your lids on, grab your bands. And they're good to go. One of my favorite parts is when your rings are really ugly, if you seriously have a problem with that, this is a great cure. Um, Mr. Sutton is going through a whole bunch of my canning rings. So now we're just giving them a quick rinse before we set them to the side because you don't want any of that sticky stuff being on the outside of the jar for all the same reasons you don't want that sticky stuff on the outside of any of your jars. So here you have Mr. Sutton's, Sutton's Days, apple pie moonshine recipe. It net us 10 quarts plus a pint. Um, you know, it may vary. Results may vary depending on what you what do. What else I add in. Right. Because um, sometimes he does get a little boozier. That's lethal. This is a sipping drink. This is not uh, a guzzling drink by any stretch of the imagination. This will, unless you are a highly experienced, please don't be, uh, beverage intaker, then um, yeah, this will this will kind of knock you on your hoozy what's it's. But it's nice as a nice little sipping cocktail with friends, <laughs> or they take it ice fishing, or they take it camping, or they take it around the bonfire. It is perfect for autumn. Exactly. Okay. Any other wise words of wisdom regarding apple pie moonshine? You can change that up by adding anything. You could throw apple chunks in it. You could throw a little caramel in it. Ooh. Caramel vodka. Caramel vodka. Yeah, the flavored vodkas. Caramel. You could make an apple cream. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things you could do with it. Yep. So this is the base recipe, the basic recipe. Come back every Thursday for the rest of the month, and Mr. Sutton here will have another shine recipe for you to put your moonshine game on point. Remember, be safe, drink responsibly if you're going to drink, and encourage those that you gift this to to drink responsibly and be safe. Until next time, everybody. Thumbs up. Be safe. Be safe.